William Charles K. Singh, born in 1922, degree in writing, died 2005. Half a million geeks were fooled, or they were in on it. Needed no basis, or everybody was in on it. NASA murdered people. The moon landing was fake. This is the guy who, whose claim to fame is he is the origin story maker for the moon landing being faked. Now, what is the compelling reason he had for saying that the moon landing was faked? He was born in 1922. He started working in 1955, or 56, excuse me, at a business called Rocketdyne, which was founded a year before. He became their senior technical writer, and then had, at the same time, head of technical publications. So he wrote all the work. So he got to go through all of it. His name is on the manuals and spec sheets for most of the shit Rocketdyne had during that period of time. 1963, many years later, for personal reasons, he resigned from where the Saturn V rocket was developed and built and became a trailer tramp writer. Retroactively, he made claims. He didn't make claims during any of this time. He made claims after the fact. After the moon landing had happened. After someone else had become the true origin story maker for this. Because he claims it wasn't him. Which means we have to check that. So, <clears throat> who came up with the story? Well, let's continue through time. 1963, a little while later, Rocketdyne became part of Rockwell International. It had been spawned from North American Aviation originally in 55. So, 1967, <coughs> as they were becoming part of another business, <coughs> the chairman of NASA Oversight Committee claimed that another person named Thomas Barron had made a valuable contribution to something. The Apollo probe about a fire that may or may not have anything to do with Rocketdyne changing into a, a subsidiary of a subsidiary. But that Thomas Barron had been overzealous, over the top, screamy. Some people died. I understand that. Six days after his testimony that he made, he had been killed mysteriously <coughs> near his Florida home. It's mysterious because a woman witnessed him attempting to cross, driving uh, a car, attempting to cross a train track and a train smashing his car and killing him, his wife, and stepdaughter. But this is the mysterious NASA did it meme. But that's a really cut and dry answer, isn't it? Was there an investigation? Yeah. I if a train hits a car, there's always going to be an investigation. Nobody has posted why they think that this was a suspicious death. He just claimed and, and made a vague assertion that it must be part of the Clinton body count. I mean the NASA body count back in the 60s. 1960s safety standards for cars, trains, and intersections, and train tracks, trestles. Does anybody remember that time? Because that's actually before I was born. I remember in my area there were just bells you could cross if you pay attention and cars stalling while going up and over the train track lump or the hump as we used to call it was actually a problem because the fuel tanks would slosh back and forth and create a fuel surge and pockets the engine would stall and depending on the angle you couldn't get fuel in but no that, that it had to be NASA rigged it to exactly the moment a train would hit exactly the location it would hit. Maybe they changed the speed of the... Maybe the driver of the train was involved. Maybe they fiddled with the car. How many train tracks did he have to go over to get hit? Did they set up each train track with something that would kill the engine with some sort of, you know, extra-dimensional quantum woo nano laser thing? So anyway, he died immediately. But that's cited as evidence of some sort of cover-up. Next. The Eagle landed in 1969, July 20th at 20... Uh, 20 hours UTC and 17 minutes. 1969 sometime, he's being vague, this is the origin story. Because uh, 
Thomas Barron wasn't a whistleblower about a fake moon landing in 1967. He was talking about safety issues and that, that fire. <coughs> so he's not the whistleblower. So we have to do this. 1969, it was claimed right after the uh, moon landing happened, some newspaper, in some Dutch newspaper, while obviously not trying to cash in on moon landing fever and make a quick buck being contrarian and, and being a uh, devil's advocate, posted a story that the moon landing authenticity was questionable. They, wa they had questions about it. They wanted to authenticate it. And it sold papers magically. I'm sure that was unintentional. But he doesn't state which newspaper. It was a newspaper. I could only find a newspaper being referenced. Someone said, I only tracked it to one newspaper and one article by one person. And it was, a, it was someone, someone who contributed the story as an opinion piece. Sure. 1972, believing not enough technology was developed to return people to the moon, was his excuse at this point, <coughs> not that it was unsafe or impossible. He originally made that claim. Now it was, it was impossible to return them from the moon, but it, was, it wasn't impossible to go to the moon. Saying, you don't need an engineering or science degree to determine if this is a hoax or whether or not we could return from the moon. You don't need to be an expert in something to decide that it's not real. Let, let's review that. People who don't know how to do a moonshot, that includes people who weren't able to do it three years before it happened, have the right to critique it by saying, you don't need to know how to do a moonshot or don't need to know how rockets work to know that you can't do it. This is the appeal to the populace, or the peanut gallery. Anybody who had any questions about it, if you were told, well, you'd have to learn this, you don't know what you're talking about. If they got offended, offense is taken, not given, for being told, you'd actually have to know what you're talking about to be able to determine if this happened. That kind of person, the majority of people, and the, let's say, 50% of the people who will have an emotional reaction to being told, if you don't know how to do a heart transplant, you can't critique it, if you don't know how to fix a computer, you don't know how I do it. That doesn't mean I did some magic or that there's a conspiracy of me installing malware in your computer a month before you ever met me. That just means you don't know what you're talking about and you having an emotional, psychotic, angry reaction to me refusing to pay my bill, that doesn't mean I hacked your machine before I met you. That does mean afterwards, if you refuse to pay your damn bill, I'll shut off the machine permanently because I'm going to be vindictive as fuck because I still have all your passwords you just gave me. Pay your fucking bill. People who get really, really get uptight when they're told you have to know what you're talking about before you open your mouth, scream louder. This guy's appealing to that. 1976, he decided to finish his book. He was he's trained as a writer, but it took him years. He said that the 12 foot wide Rocketdyne F1 engines were totally unreliable. Now remember, he had. Uh, quit the job there in 1967? No, 1963. For personal reasons. He was a technical writer. He just rewrote things and made it to where they made sense. He doesn't have any technical knowledge. But, from 1963 to 1976, 13 years later, he said, on that day, that they couldn't possibly have improved the F1 engines to be more reliable. Not that they couldn't get you to the moon or, you, or anything else. They couldn't take off and go to the moon. He changed his story in 2001, by the way. But let's listen to his current iteration based on not being there for 13 years and going off being a, uh, a trailer tramp writer of books on farming in the 60s, appealing to hippies. So anyway, <coughs> Mr. Hippie Head says rocket engines he hasn't seen for 13 years that were 12 foot across from a company that he probably quit because he was told, maybe you're not an expert in stuff. Maybe that's what happened. You just write stuff. You don't know what you're talking about. You're not an engineer. Um, he said the engine's unreliable. So instead of using them, <coughs> even if they're unreliable, they'll at least get you up there. <coughs> in the first stage of the Saturn V rocket, they decided to replace them with five times as many low-powered Atlas missile rockets, C-1 cluster or B-1 rockets. 
uh, depending on the story. Uh, I can't track down exactly which engine he's talking about. But he said it was much, much lower power. And they jammed five times as many of them in there for some reason, which would increase complexity and failure rate, which defeats the whole purpose of replacing an unreliable motor. By the way, F1 engines weren't unreliable, they were being used. They'd been used for unmanned missions and they weren't really unreliable. But they're part of a stage of a rocket engine that's a fuel tank, a bunch of rockets, another fuel tank with a set of rockets under that one, etc. And he said that these five little rockets were jammed in the bell of what was made to look like an F1 engine. Except for the fact that you can see underneath it to tell if that's happening. And why wouldn't they just say, we're replacing the motors with five times as many smaller ones, and then make up a story about how that increases reliability. <coughs> And it used 1 20th the fuel weight, except for the fact that the entire outside of the fuel tank area was covered in humidity condensation-based ice, confirming that it was brought to... Uh, they froze that thing with liquid, hy liquid hydrogen and oxygen. <coughs> but only 1 20th it was full, so they took the 20th and put it to the outside with a sheet of plastic or metal or something. So anyway, so it was an unmanned low-Earth orbit with uh, something thrown into partial orbit. Now, of course, he doesn't explain how the... Well, they fake the mission's uh, radio transmissions. Well, the easiest way to do that would be to use a very narrow band <coughs> antenna pointed back to the Earth and send it a bundle of information quickly and have it rebroadcast it from a rocket you throw towards the moon so you at least can get it faked correctly. He doesn't tell anybody how that would happen, but that would also kind of work. But this brilliant engineer, who isn't, he's a writer, he's a technical writer, couldn't come up with that. Sounds like a bad sci-fi writer. Anyway, and then he decided to dress up the story. This was 1976, by saying that they staged it at Area 51, and they had strippers and cheese sandwiches. He, bla he brought up unbelievably complicated details there was no way he would have access to, because this is a super secret subject. He embellished the shit out of his fictitious story. Stopping right now. <coughs> William Charles Casing, who sued someone once for saying he's wacky, was a bald-faced liar who made up shit and wrote novels. Prove me wrong. Next. <clears throat> All of this was done to brainwash the American public, control the media, didn't work, uh, cigars, Nixon tapes, didn't work, and to poison people's food supply. He threw that in, because that's a populist bullshit story based on actual incidents like that that had happened. That actually did happen, but that's not what was going on then. What he did was he took all the conspiracy theories of the day that most of you have forgotten even existed, that were bullshit at the time and are terribly easy to disprove, and he put them in at the time because someone couldn't disprove it. Anyway, by the year 2001, after Fax destroyed the shit out of his previous book, he just wrote a new one. They really did launch. They used uh, all the missiles that he said they weren't using. And they orbited for eight days instead of doing a fake um, thing in Vegas with sandwiches and hookers. And he retroclaimed all of this, but he still said that they did a pre-recorded recording. And they still... But, that, but, but, okay, they put it in orbit, so nobody could detect it in orbit, so they had self technology, but they detected the, the rocket and everything going towards the moon and coming back. Because this was monitored by... All of that. Also, since then, China, Russia, Japan, and India have confirmed independently the equipment sitting there on the moon in various ways. Several times. China would have no problem telling everybody in the world that we faked that mission. But they're in on it, too. <clears throat> and they also murdered a teacher and other astronauts on the Challenger because she wouldn't say that she couldn't see stars on a fake ship mission. Wait a minute, you said they could go into orbit. The Challenger was only going into orbit. It was never going to the moon because she wouldn't lie about stars in space. And they also killed everybody in the Apollo launch fire because he said it was incompetence and an accident, but then later on he said it had to be on purpose. Which is it? We don't know. He died. I'm glad he's dead. Because he sues people for telling everybody that he lied that he changes the story. That none of this has any basis of being an engineer. He's not. That's why he said you don't have to be an engineer to be like him. You have to be an engineer a little bit to be able to learn that he lied. Thanks for watching. Have a good day. Good luck.